Hi, I'm Russell and Hancock. I'm part of the team um, and at Agile Beach. This talk I went to because I had documentation and it was about documentation. And I thought it was about time I actually had a look and tried to get over my hatred of documentation. Um, I didn't. I still hate documentation. It says right there. Um, but I actually found this talk really interesting because I like the model they used, I like the way they explained it, I like the way they went about it. Um, it was the C4 model for visualizing software architecture, it's a much big there. It's a guy called Simon Brown, again, he was very engaging, very good professional speaker, does it everywhere, went into a lot more detail than I'm going to do, um, but I will try and convey <laughs> some of that to you as we go along. So, my problem with documentation, um, it's too low level, quite often. There's OP building, does that help you know where it is? Can we tell anyone, does that major roads anything? Or, it's too high level. There it is, it's right there. <laughs> I stole that, that's what he did. Um, it gets the point across that getting it right is, is almost impossible. You know, you're either going to be too high up, no one else is going on, it's just a big abstract thing, you're too far down, you're in too much detail, you're telling people things they don't need to know about technical stuff when they're not interested. It takes too long to write it. I don't know, I get bored writing documentation. I could spend hours getting nowhere because I get fed up. And then I never read it because someone sends me a 100-page Word document and I just ignore it, I've got to be honest. It sits on the file, stick it in the server where everyone get it, never look at it again. So that's my issue with documentation. This is what I was hoping to fix when I went there to see what was going on. And he went about on about this model, C4 model, I can't remember what it means, there's four bits to it and they all begin with C. I'll tell you in a minute, it comes up. Um, this is what they say about it. Nice words there, I'll let you read that, I don't want to. Um, basically what it says is use an approach similar to Google Maps where you can come from a very high level, you have a slightly more detailed one, a slightly more detailed one, and at the very bottom you've got your code level review. Um, and it's a way of ensuring that what you actually produce is relevant to everybody. A um, little bit more complicated than that, but that is the main overview of uh, kind of how the model works. And part of that is a set of diagrams. They, they say there's four levels to it, and they kind of um, ask you to go into them. The guy presented this, he spent a long time on this bit, and they did it based around an internet banking system. So I'm going to steal, I've stolen some of his pictures, they'll show up in a second. I'm going to try and convey it in the same way he did. So you start with your system context. This is the top level, and actually you can't read any of that. I thought it was big enough, but you can't. This is your customer. This is your internet banking system. You've got your mainframe system and your email system. So it's just a very high level. This is what the system does. This is who it's talking to. This is who's going to use it. This is the other systems it talks to. Um, and what he's done is he's used the, the kind of the dark blue for the customer, the mid blue, as the main point, and then other things are just in grey. They're on there, but they're not really there. Um, the next level we're down is into containers. Now this doesn't mean Docker. This means a grouping of code, a relevant set of functionality. So with the internet banking, what they've actually done is there's a web app here, there's the front end or mobile app, and then there's an API component. And what he's done is taken each of the chunks, so the mobile bit is one logical chunk, because that's a mobile app you're going to build. It might be there's two, it might be an Android one, an iOS one. He's stuck with one simple one. Underneath that there's an API level, so you split the calls from the display, good modeling, You've got database off to the side, so you, you group the main levels together, but again, you're still not in too much info here, but you're showing how it all hangs together, where each of the components live, how it's all going to get together. You then move on to the component. Now this is getting, breaking each bit down a bit further, and so again, you can't read it here, but this is the sign-in channel, so you've got a sign-in screen, you've got a controller that does the logic, and that talks to the database. Then you've got a um, password reset screen, a controller, and an email server that sends out the, the emails. And then you've got kind of the main display pages. So you've got the display bit, the controller bit, and the um, actual mainframe where it talks to in the background. And that one's got a bit more level, a bit more detail on it, and it goes into a bit more info about how it all links together and how each of those components break down. So it's still very clear, very easy to see if it's not on a fuzzy screen like this. And then at the bottom, you've got your code. So this is where you actually get into it. But this was my favorite bit of the entire presentation. He said, don't do that one. I like that. <laughs> Basically, what he said is at that level, you should be able to use something like Swagger or Visio to reverse engineer a database or an entity um, framework diagram or something else to automate that step. You don't want to be getting involved in that step. That's the really low level. How will your classes hang together? What calls what? What's independent? Use some automated code for that. Don't do that level. So I like the fact it's called the C4 model, but actually you only do three of them.
that made documentation even easier to me. I like that. So that wasn't all that was in it. Obviously, there's some basic things they, they stuck with around documentation. Have a key or a legend. Always make sure, you know, the, the person icon, it means a person. A round tub, that's a database. Don't suddenly use a round tub to be a person and actually tell people what, what you've got, why they're there. Make sure each of the diagrams can stand alone and has enough context on it. If we go back, you can't really read it, but on here, these bits of words actually explain what it's doing, and these are the kind of the functional bits of it. It actually, you can read that, um, and you can read that, it's up on his website, I'll link to it in a second. You can read that, and it actually explains what the model is doing, and you don't need to see the other two to know what this one's doing, so you can just grab one and actually look at it and um, go on with it. Make sure everyone understands what's on it. Anyone know what these two things mean? I know James does, because it's IFS and Compass, the two internal systems for user Imris. I didn't actually know what IFS stood for until today. I looked it up. It's industry and finance systems. Um, stick IFS on a map, on a piece of documentation, you give it to somebody, they're not going to know what it is. So make sure you explain everything that's going on there. I think these kind of relate to all documentation, but he kind of made those points and made them hold in. So, this is what I loved about it. Those, those diagrams he had, very clear, very easy, enough information to know what's going on, but not so much that when you look at it, you go completely blind and you get confused. He had the descriptions on there, so everybody, you know, you could give that diagram to somebody and they would know what's going on. Um, you know, a new member of the team, give it to them, they know what's going on. The documentation is not going to bore them to tears, and it shouldn't take too long to do those diagrams because they're just some boxes and a few words. You're not writing reams and reams of documents, you're not creating a massive 100-page PDF. It's quite a simple, one screen covers one area, and then you move on and you do high level and mid level on a kind of, you know, the, the context, the components, the containers of components. So it shouldn't take massive amounts of time. What I don't like about it, I still don't like documentation, it's still gonna take time, and I'm a very bad developer, I like writing code. I don't like writing about it. It makes it very hard for other people to know what I've done, but it means I get more done. I don't know the amount of times I've referred to a bit of documentation and realised it was relevant to the last version and not the current version. That happens, and, and actually, to be fair, this model doesn't fix that. It's still down to you to remember to do that. Um, the one it doesn't really cover, although he said make sure you cover all acronyms, <coughs> you're not going to. You're going to still... There's inherent things that you know. As part of being a part of a team, you're going to know those things. You've just been in that team, you've been doing it for a year. I know IFS is the main back-end system. I know Compass is a front-end system that controls workflow to make sure things are approved properly. I just know those things. Me explaining what IFS means isn't going to convey that to the person. So it still doesn't quite cover everything, but actually it went through in enough detail that you should convey the most important things for people to pick up. Um, and that's what I liked about it. And that website, have a look at it. They go through all this in a lot more detail. It's a lot more engaging than I am. Um, there's links off to other things. They've got more case studies on there. They've got examples of where they've used it. Um, there's a couple of other pages um, that are on there. So, yeah, please have a look. <laughs>